hey, this is Everything's Messy Podcast. I'm Sarah. Episode four, here we are. I have a great episode lined up for you today. Very excited about it. First, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for all of the people that are listening and supporting. I'm so grateful that there's people out there. I mean, we're getting people all over the world to listen to this podcast, and I'm just super excited. I really hope you are getting something out of this podcast. I know that I am, and I still want you to feel like we're building a community or a tribe. If you have a messy story, share it with me. Let's talk about it. If you're disagreeing with the things that I'm saying, please let's talk about it. Uh, I'm sure we can find a respectful way to do that. And just, it's okay to have a difference of opinion and let's, let's get messy about it. Uh, My email, everything's messy at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and X, which was Twitter, all at everything's messy. So shoot me a line. Let's, let's talk. Let's get messy. Let's have fun. My uh, interview today is with Therese or T. Fortin Barnes. Amazing interview. She is so full of knowledge. She has her own podcast. It's called Green Living with T. And she's also uh, the um, founder of the Green Living Gurus. She also has an, her own business called T's Organics that we talk about. She has this expertise where she can help people who have either um, have an autoimmune disease or somebody that might be a cancer survivor or a current cancer patient. She can also help just anyone trying to get more healthy and to detox. She's helping people rid the toxic things in their home. Uh, Things that you may not even know, candles, different pots and pans, you know, shampoos, laundry detergent. She helps all of that comes out of your house and she helps you replace it with things that are non-toxic. It's very interesting what she has to say. She even talks about plants that you can use to purify our air. I don't think it's really talked about, but apparently, according to her, the air in our house is much more polluted than the outside air. And she talks all about that. I'm very excited. So let's get into it with her. Without further ado, here is my interview with Therese T. Fortin Barnes. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. Uh, so let's first, um, how about you tell us a little bit about how you got started with becoming a household toxic health specialist? Well, I have to go way back to my okay. childhood and when I was um, growing up here in Buffalo, New York, and I have three older sisters and a younger brother. And my mother was very vigilant in keeping us away from chemicals. And she was way ahead of her time in the 60s and 70s. And we would clean uh, every Saturday, you know, we had our chores and we would clean with vinegar and water and baking soda and just regular soap. And then uh, food wise, it was always all fresh uh, farmer's market, if we, you know, at the time, or our little co-op, which we all still shop at to this day. Wow. A little bit bigger than what it was when she was going there in the sixties and seventies, because it's, it's like a, a little mini, mini, mini whole foods in this little area that we live right in the center of Buffalo, um, that everybody shops at, but it is, she kept us away from processed foods. She kept us away from any kind of junk food. And that was when junk foods were really coming out onto the market and she wouldn't have that. So we'd come home from school, we'd have hummus and apple and, uh, you know, things like that. And she was, uh, my mother was Lebanese and Italian and she had all home cooked meals by her mother. So that's how we grew up. We knew nothing different until we started getting a little older and not necessarily getting teased, Uh, maybe a little bit granola heads. I'm sure we've been called a few times and uh, people would come over and, you know, where's the, where's the, uh, the pretzels or potato chips. And we just didn't have that. So when I got through high school, I wanted to go to college to open up a health food store. And I wanted to open up something big that people could find everything they needed at this health food store. You know that store is Whole Foods. I came out with a major in business, a minor in health, a whole business plan to open up this fabulous 
big supermarket health food store, but I came out as a party planner because that was my other hat that I wore all the time. I was one planning every single party. And in the 80s, the party industry and the event planning industry took off. And I was fortunate enough to get a job in that industry. And then from there, I started my own business and I've had my own event and party and wedding planning business for 37, eight, nine years, somewhere in there. Wow. So I, I, when 2020 came along, I wanted to really uh, flip over to what I really set my life out to do. And that was helping people get rid of toxic chemicals out of their homes, because I was really doing that for the past three decades. People would come to me and can you come on over and help me show me where potentially chemicals are lurking in my home that are cancer causing. I'd have cancer patients call, call me after going through all their treatments and they wanted to make sure their house was detoxed. So I just did it on the side, didn't get paid, didn't do anything, but it's really my true passion. So is, did yeah. you or any of your family members have any ailments for you to bring that kind of lifestyle in or you just always knew that was you know that was how you were brought up like did your mom suffer from anything and that's why she kept the stuff out of the house or it was just something that she was very traditional about and just did um a little of both that's a good question because she just knew and she uh, wanted to instill that in us so uh she and she she studied a lot um into the health and wellness industry. She actually worked at the club, but her sister got cancer, her best friend mm -hmm. and ovarian cancer. And we attribute that to actually um, baby powder. She used baby powder mm -hmm. all the time. She had ovarian cancer. She eventually died right after I graduated from college in 1985. So sorry. Yes, I know. So we had that lurking. And then of course, cancer husbands on the rise too, right? And then my mother, everything she did great in her life, she had one thing she couldn't give up and it was swimming in a swimming pool every single morning of her life at a, a center here. She would come home reeking of chlorine. I mean, we could barely even hug her because of her chlorine. She'd soak, she'd take a bath every day in dry milk and uh, apple cider vinegar, which draws out the, the chemicals from you. But eventually we think that ultimately killed her um, when she was 80 because uh, chlorine is a neurotoxin and she had something wrong with her, um, her neuro, her neuro, neurology, neuro, neurological system was off. They couldn't figure out what it was and they attributed it to the chlorine that she wow. was in every single day. Wow. So on that note, um, everybody else in our, and our family is pretty much uh, healthy. My dad lived till he was 93, 94. And he believed me, he was not the healthiest person before he met my mother. Um, my sister has an autoimmune illness. We can't figure out where that's coming from. So she is, and I'm her health advocate. So she is on high alert all the times. Uh, any kind of chemical that she comes in contact with, if somebody has perfume on and they try to hug her, it can just send her whole system into haywire. She can get migraines. She can get sick. She can end up in the hospital she's, as she has before. So so we're um, very alert, especially. That's, yeah, I, I too suffer. I can just sense a spray and it can be a very subtle uh, fragrance. It doesn't have to be overpowering. And I just get a whiff of it and I will get a migraine instantly, instantly. and be down for the count. And it just, yeah. it, we, we try very hard not to have fragrances, but you take it even a little bit further, I think. Um, and just the, like some of the things I was reading in your blog, it really dives deep into the air in our home and what we're bringing into our home. So talk a little bit about just the everyday stuff in our home and what we can do to sort of clean the air. Yeah. So our homes are typically, and this is the CDC reporting this somewhere between two and a hundred times more polluted than the outdoor air. Wow. People think the outdoor air is more polluted. It's really our indoor air. And unfortunately with COVID too, everybody's at home and people are panicking about this virus and uh, closing up their houses and spraying more chemicals to clean and using, you know, 
hand sanitizers constantly. But in your home, the air is so important in your home and especially anybody that has a new build. Not only do you have all those outgassing, all the outgassing going on with all the new build materials, but they make those homes so airtight that that it's almost I had one guy say he does house inspections and sometimes he goes in them and he feels like he's in a coffin there's so there he feels like there's no air movement so the one thing you always want to do is make sure you've got air movement in your house middle of winter doesn't matter open up a window get some fresh air moving Fans are great too to get the air circulating but the really opening up a window to just get some fresh air in now it all depends on where you live if you're on the you know in a condo on top of an expressway it's not the freshest air <laughs> right but you really that fresh air is so important your fans your uh air conditioning units all those things can help if they're clean sure so your all your air conditioners all your heating units have filters you want to make sure you're either cleaning those or putting in new ones ceiling fans the amount of times i've gone to airbnbs and i i will clean my sister and i actually will clean the airbnb before we actually and we bring our own sheets for that matter too but ceiling fans and the dust on ceiling fans that people don't clean regularly yeah and that's just falling bad. into the air right and you're breathing yes. that in okay yep breathing it in and uh take your shoes off at the door but really it's the products that you're using in your home that are causing the air in your home to be toxic. So what are you cleaning with? Because whatever you're spraying in your home, whatever those chemicals are, uh, that is getting into your air. So those are VOCs that are polluting your air. You might think you're cleaning the floor or cleaning the counter. Unfortunately, you're making your house dirty and your air dirty for you. And yeah. So one of the things that I noticed, and this has been a long journey and process for me, but just like I was telling you, the slightest smell really, it triggers me and has, I get really bad migraines with it. So I started just cleaning with vinegar. And mm. at the time you, you know, you're, we're kind of brainwashed where it has to be bleached to be clean. It has to be bleached to be clean. And so yeah. I actually had to deprogram myself a little bit to, you know, kind of read up on the, you know, parts of water to parts of vinegar to actually have it, you know, sustainable. And it, it was really a, pro a process for me to, you know, step away from bleach and those kinds of things, because that's, you know, what, what we're told that it works the best. They use it in hospitals. That's what, you know, what you're supposed to use in your home. So that, how do you, what do you recommend for people just starting out the slightest little bit that they should, should it be uh, removing the bleach? Should it be removing something else? What do you recommend to start with? Well, you now that at the beginning, you have to decode your brain. And that is true. You it's fair. It once, once you make one or two of those little changes, people will start realizing the, and, and you're, 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 as you said, you can tell right away the fragrance so once you start eliminating some of the things that are could potentially be causing health issues that you don't even know are causing health issues, such as anything with fragrance in it, anything, laundry detergent, shampoos, candles, uh, they're loaded with them. So, and I'm, I know I'm going all over the place, but really the first thing that everybody can do is avoid anything with the word fragrance in it. So talk a little bit about that. What is yep. what does the word fragrance entail really? So in this is very interesting because the in the 1940s, Chanel number no. five went to our government and said, we don't want to tell anybody what's in our perfume. It's a trade secret. So they came out with this law that is still in existence to this day, that if you put fragrance in your product, any product, you do not have to disclose what is in that fragrance. You're kidding. Nope. And it's wow. Horrible. And it's this horrific. started back in the 40s. 40s. Wow. So if you, it could be fragrance, perfume, perfume, anything like that. And and all laundry laundry detergents, they all, you know, they put 
fragrance. Some will say natural, natural fragrance, which is, you know, it's just wrong um, because they, they're trying to get you to believe that there's natural fragrance in there. And they don't want to tell you those ingredients and they don't have to tell you those ingredients. And over the years, they uh, have, there's been some companies starting to investigate this a little bit. There were some reports that came out with the fragrance that was in sunscreen and it had benzene in it. Benzene is very common ingredient in fragrance. Benzene is known to cause cancer. Yeah, that's a known carcinogen. Yeah. yeah. So that is, you know, there's there's hundreds of ingredients they can put in there that you will never know unless you that's amazing. Try, try to ask. Yeah. It's really, to me personally, it's a sin. Yeah. And it's horrible that these businesses are doing this and little kids are breathing in this fragrance every day. And they're trying to get, think mothers and fathers think it's that smell of fresh air, that smell of lavender is natural. And there's nothing natural about it. Because they're not even using, I'm sure, any part of the lavender plant to put yeah. in it to make that fragrance. It's all synthetic, I'm sure. It's all synthetic. And if they do, it only has to be 2%. Uh, if they say uh, scented with essential oils, because that's another, you know, people are, essential oils are considered to be healthy, but they only have to have 2% of essential oils in there for them to claim that it's scented with essential oils. Wow. So... It's, it's really a, it's, and the fragrance industry, very powerful, yeah. along with the chemical industry. They're all tied together and they're in Washington lobbying for what they're representing. And they're representing the fragrance industry, which is a multi billion dollar industry. You know, and I'm not even talking about perfume, which is so toxic. Sure. And, but just everyday household things. And yeah. let's circle back a little bit to like the candles that you were mentioning the, um, you always, you know, smell, especially as we're approaching fall, you have like mm -hmm. your apple or your cinnamon or your pumpkin. Um, those are probably don't have any of those actual ingredients in them yet. The, they smell like they do, but all of that is super toxic as well. Correct. Oh yeah. Candles. You got to be really careful of, and they are very tricky. Um, what they list down there, uh, they might say, you know, coconut oil candle, and there's only a little bit of coconut in mm -hmm. with the the wax with some of its uh, petroleum derivatives. And if the wick is lead, um, I've had so many people say there, you know, you'll see the ceiling sometimes because the lead can shoot up and make a mark around the wall. Oh and my so goodness. you got to be careful with any, any candles. Um, there's some good ones on the market. That's a good, that's a good sign, you know, news. There's like, yeah, they're starting to, but I feel like it's even some of those products, they're either extremely expensive that, you know, or they're still trying to trick you with having some of those chemicals in it. So, and, you know, as a woman, I feel um, more and more every day, the, you know, the new beauty products come out every day, mm. something shoved in our face of all of these things that as women, we think we have to slather on our body. Talk a little bit about that and, and how toxic that can be. So a woman typically puts on her body 168 chemicals a day. A man is more like, uh, I believe they're like 120 or something like that. Just with the products, the lotions, the hairspray the face lotion, the toothpaste, the shampoo. And they, they're they going into our system. And no matter, you know, your skin is your largest organ. And the, the ingredients, like you have to pay attention to what you are putting on your skin. It's just like you would read a label on something that you're going to eat. Sure. You want to read the labels and start to understand what you're putting on your skin, what you're putting on your hair, what you're putting on your kid's skin, you know? So there's, there's just becoming aware of it. Turn the late, turn the bottle around. Sure. Look at those ingredients, make sure the word fragrance is not on there and then start, you know, and I tell everybody start to do your own little research and look at some of the top ingredients and like, what is that? 
what is, you know, sulfate? What is, uh, uh, you know, there's so many, there's over 80,000 chemicals on the market. Wow. And uh, the good thing, like 10 years ago, very, very hard to find decent products that didn't have all these chemicals in them. Now we have choices. There's so many wonderful choices out there. They're just not mainstream. Although they are coming a little bit, once in a while, I'll see them popping up into our, you know, our supermarkets or more so the um, pharmacy or the Right Aid, CVS, those across the country. Okay. But you really, honestly, you have to read your labels. Thankfully, Seventh Generation is still a decent company, even though they were bought out by a big conglomerate. They've stuck to their their ground with their uh, products. Seventh generation is a good option. You can find those almost anywhere now. Okay. So years ago, yeah, and there, I think there's it. a few like that. I think originally, um, Burt's Bees was like a natural thing that you could, and they were bought out by Clorox or yes. uh, the yeah, and then yes. they're no longer the natural they, what we knew it to be when it started out. I know. I was very sad about that. Yeah, very sad. Hopefully, we'll have other choices come out there. Um, there are there's are so many wonderful choices i mean even laundry soap and laundry detergent uh i buy it on amazon and i buy meloria or molly suds and they and what what is what is in there just basically what baking soda maybe and um uh i can't say exactly because i just know um it, not not so much baking soda but um you have to, I, I can't, I can't. I That's can't okay. Read. That's okay. That's I just know I've done my research and in my group of people in this country that we all study this, everybody, you know, we do our research on these different groups and our different products. Right. And th those are and they true. pass the test. Oh yes. Yeah. They pass okay. The test. Yeah. So uh, talking about the harsh chemicals, is there like a top three, a top two that you would say, if you're, you know, starting to look, if you're starting to becoming aware, what are like the top that you should really be focusing on to just start eliminating out of your house? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I have a guide on my website, the top ingredients to avoid. Okay. That, that people can download, but you know, the, again, I will go back to fragrance because that is by far number one, because okay. you, you will be avoiding a lot of chemicals by avoiding fragrance. Okay. That is such a huge step in the right direction for anybody. It's going to be the hardest thing for everybody that uses fragrance because people are addicted to their smell that they love, or they were raised on dryer sheets, which are so toxic. Uh, yeah. And those smells, you have to start, as you said, decoding your brain because you associate all this wonderful. Yeah. The, the deprogramming was really, really hard. Even a few years back, I switched from dryer sheets to wool balls to balls, put in good, the dryer. Yeah. But that was so hard because you're, you're accustomed to the, you know, towel or the shirt coming out of the dryer smelling a certain way, or it has a certain feel and that you don't typically get that with the wool ball. Now, it's still clean and dry and it's, it's fine. But you know, with the dryer sheet, it seemed to be just that smell of lawn, you know, fresh launder laundry and things like that. Like that and so just like I said having to deprogram and get away from that is so that was really hard that was really hard and once you start realizing that it's actually making your clothes dirty it is not oh, cleaning a, your clothes oh yeah I guess it is making it. your clothes toxic you are sleeping in those chemicals you are breathing them in every day they actually are harmful to the uh, fibers in your clothes too as well wearing them out faster uh, there's just a laundry list of reasons that you want to avoid all that's a good chemicals. way that's a good way to look at it that it's um you're actually making them dirty yeah i mean and and some of these some of these chemicals have neurological effects and can be causing as simple as like runny noses or sore throats or you're sniffling very common that those 
chemicals in those products that you're sleeping in, that you're in your clothes every day in, could be causing some of these uh, neurological um, uh, issues. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um, my one of my questions was going to be, what are some common symptoms if somebody has a high um, toxic load? What might they be experiencing to know that you are you have overload of all these toxins and to start um, recognizing the symptoms so you can heal and get rid of them? Yeah. And so, so the, everybody's different. So it's hard to, to pinpoint, you know, what are the symptoms? The ones that I come in contact with the most that when I get people to make the changes are waking up with the sore throat, having the sniffles when you think it's, uh, you know, pollen or something, um, a headache, maybe just a light little sore throat that you wake up with every morning, the sniffles that your your body is trying to get rid of these toxic chemicals out of your system. And those are some some signs. Headaches, definitely. I will get a headache if I have to breathe in any kind of, if I go to, if I have to sleep in a bed that has these chemicals, which I won't sleep in the bed, usually I'll be like, covering my head you know sometimes I if you spend the night at a friend's house typically I bring my own pillow and sheets but sometimes I forget I can I I will have the worst night's sleep my head feels all foggy the next morning until I get up and get some fresh air and kind of clear out my brain almost you know um, it can cause drowsiness it can affect your sleep uh, dizziness, you know, it all depends. Everybody's body is different. But once you start eliminating some of these uh, ingredients and chemicals from your lifestyle, you will probably start realizing you didn't even know you were feeling bad until you start feeling until you start to feel better. better. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's a very good thing. Um, yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, I noticed, um, on one of the blogs, I think you had put out, there are certain, um, like plants that you can bring inside the house that will clean the mm -hmm. air. What, what, which do you recommend that will really do a good job with just starting out in this endeavor? Yeah. So I am definitely a plantaholic <laughs> <laughs> thanks to my father. That was his, his, uh, contribution to uh our green living as kids but um i have probably 100 plants in our house in a lot of people don't have a green thumb there are very there are some plants out there that are so easy to take care of and there you can even just google easiest plants to take care of because you almost can't kill them um one's a snake plant that uh is that goes straight up. It looks like a snake actually. And it just kind of stands up in the air. Those are great. You can put And that, a, that'll purify the air. That'll clean yeah, the air. Man, yeah. The more plants that you can have, the better. Um, spider plants is another one that's really easy to take care of. I mean, plants have been, you know, people have known that plants definitely uh, can purify the air. On another scale, purifying the air, which I am a huge proponent of, are air purifiers. Okay. So I have plants and I have air purifiers always at the same time running constantly in our home. Okay. Yeah. Um, so air, pur especially now we're, we're in Buffalo, New York, you're in California. Well, you have, you have fires out there as well. We've been having issues uh, early in the summer with the Canadian fires. Oh, right. And, all the smoke that drifted down from mm -hmm. Canada. Yeah. And everybody had to shut their doors and windows right when you wanted to open up your doors and windows. We've been locked up for winter and it's like, it, and it was bad. Um, I You go outside and you'd get a sore throat and you'd get a headache. So air purifiers to me are the best thing, investment that you can have in your home. And is there certain plants that are better depending on the season or indoor plants? It shouldn't matter because it's typically the same climate indoors. Exactly. Yep. So, I so, mean, we're bombarded, you know, every day, everybody's bombarded. So the you have control over your house as opposed to when you walk out the door. Sure. So the more of these things that you can do in your home, 
you know, the better, because once you leave your home, you have no control, unfortunately, or where you work. Um, well, and especially since COVID, we've spent a lot more time in our houses than I think people yes. you know, did before. <laughs> so, yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So, and all right. So then just a little bit more. Um, I read this and I just wanted to get your take on it. So what is the most important information that every cancer patient survivor needs to know about the carcinogenics and the things that are out there? What, you know, is there something that they can do that would help them in their journey of recovery or just something that, you know, cleaning the air as simple as that is going to help them? Just what is your take on that? So now, yes. So cancer patients who I talk to a lot, um, they're more in tune because now they obviously are worried about recurring cancer. Um, and everybody should be worried. Unfortunately, we all should be worried, not just cancer patients. And the, and their immune system is compromised. So once your immune system is compromised, then you definitely want to watch every chemical that it, you're coming in contact with. The, the problem that I see is that you have the the cleaning companies, you know, that are trying to tell you, clean, 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 kill the germs and viruses, but unfortunately, these chemicals are killing your good. Um, they're they're in, inhibiting your immune system, and they potentially are also killing good bacteria. So. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, I noticed you brought up um, early on, you brought up hand sanitizer, and I know that's mm -hmm. sort of a controversial issue, but I, I, I we're a big proponent of anti <laughs> hand sanitizer. And I know that's yep. a big, that's a big no, no. And that, you know, it's probably part of the reason why we homeschool. <laughs> so we don't get in trouble with putting the hand sanitizer on, but Good um, for you. I, yeah. there's things in um, the hand sand. Is it the triclosine or something like that? That's yeah. actually, you're not only killing the good bacteria or the bad bacteria, but you're killing the good bacteria. also, then yeah. you're leaving your hands without any defense, no matter yeah. what they're touching. They're there's no defense that they can have for you. And then we touch our face or we're touching our hair, whatever it is. I mean, it just leaves us complete, completely defenseless. Um, and I wish people would just go back. You know, I found it funny in COVID, they had to like reteach people how to wash their hands. It was like, well, what were we doing before that? <laughs> like, why weren't people washing their hands? I know. And soap and water, soap and water. The hand sanitizer, I mean, that's all driven by our chemical companies yeah who are all tied into our pharmaceutical companies who are all tied into our medical fields you know it's just it's a really bad cycle and uh our you know not and we're kind of diverting here a little bit but our medical industry and and you know we need them of course but unfortunately they're only trained somewhere around six hours and they're entire uh education on preventative medicine really what they're trained in is giving you pharmaceutical drugs absolutely to, yes where we are it, you know exactly to you know instead of getting to that root cause what could be causing the allergies what could be causing the the headaches let's look at step back and say oh let's get an air quality monitor in your house and see what what, what you're, you're breathing breathing in as opposed to here, take Claritin and take this instead of yeah. like, let's look and see. So it's, it's, again, it's, it's people looking out for themselves. The beauty, you know, the internet's wonderful in that sense too. There's so much information out there um, that, you know, it's good and bad, but that will, you know, I've interviewed so many people that have done, that have had health issues, did the research, and realized they don't want to take any medicine anymore. They want to figure out why are they having these issues. Yeah, I've interviewed medical doctors who had autoimmune problems, and all of a sudden they're like, "Wait, I'm not. I don't want to give myself medicine. I want to find out why am I 
having these issues. Yes. And it's been, I think that's a change we're starting to see that people are waking up to this, that we as uh, human beings, that we have to pay attention to everything we come Absolutely. We can't just take it for granted that they're taking care of us because they're not. No. And no. I, I, I tell my story on that very, yeah, that's just... Uh, we definitely, the joke in our house is that's why they call it practicing medicine because they're not, you know, it's a guess, it's a what if, and then they prescribe a, a prescription for you and that's supposed to take care of it. And we're just trying to educate ourselves and come away from that because it's just not, uh, it's not helpful. It certainly no, isn't. No, no. And of course, some, some drugs and medications, of course, are definitely helpful. I'm not knocking them, but it's just they that's how they're trained and the, it's the pharmaceutical industry which is the pretty much the drug industry the chemical industry they're all the food industry it's all connected. the food industry all connected yeah definitely. it's all connected oh my gosh yeah so um sh- and wait, with- let me add oh, one other yes. thing there too because i get this a lot people say well the product wouldn't be on the market if it wasn't safe and that is absolutely wrong because so many products, especially cleaning supplies, don't have to be regulated. They trust the company to put whatever they're doing to self-regulate to put that That's on amazing. the market. That's yeah, amazing. Is. That Whereas, should make us wake yeah, right up. Right. Whereas our food industry is regulated by the FDA and they've got to have, you know, that's all regulated. But uh it's it's the it's wild west out there. It yeah. really is. <laughs> it seems like that. So, uh, so I want to get into, you have your own organic line of health, um, cleaning products and things. So tell us mm-hmm. about teas organics and how that came to be and when, what, uh, products you have with that. Yeah. So when I, uh, again, when I was growing up in the seventies and sixties, my mother had these bottles of vinegar and we'd clean the windows with newspaper and vinegar. But so then I created my own uh all purpose spray which is basically vinegar water and seven different essential oils and i would give it out as presents and people would say i i i i'm addicted i can't use anything else it's like got it's great smells it's cinnamon and clove and rosemary and lemon and uh orange and um and a few uh, ginger and they all have cleaning properties uh in them too so then it became a friend of mine said you need to you need to bottle this you need to have somebody bottle it for you and sell it so that's sort of how it happened it's manufactured here in buffalo i gave them the recipe you can order it on my website and then they ship it out for me it's it's very small right now uh, but we ship all over the country and um on top of the all-purpose spray i have three room sprays that are for your room or bathroom or anywhere you have like a smell you kind of want to get rid of a hockey bag to a gym bag. Oh, nice. So it's like a a spray that you just spray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they're all in glass jars. You always want essential oils in dark glass jars. They're beautiful blue jars. And then I have a a refill bottle for the all-purpose spray because we want you to not throw away that beautiful blue bottle and you just pour in the ingredients and fill it up with water. That's awesome. All right. And then uh, what services do you offer to people that, you know, maybe need coaching or want to get a little more digging deep into purifying their home and things like that? Yeah, it's all listed on my website. You can do one-on-one. Um, I, I do hourly if somebody just wants to chat on the phone, if they want me to go through their house with them. Uh, I've done that before where we just, uh, talk about each room um sort of are people uh, surprised to know when you come across something that's just heavily laden with toxins are people surprised when you say oh yeah that's got to go that you're done with that are are they surprised or is it like oh I knew that but I wanted to keep it anyway um sometimes they're surprised yeah you know it's an eye-opener uh when you start really uh looking at everything and not even just products even like just in the kitchen pots and pans i really definitely their first pans uh, and especially if they're 
the uh, nonstick pans and if they have any scratches in them, which is a big no-no and get rid, throw it away. Don't even give it away. Throw and it so away. what do you recommend in its place? I only use cast iron. My husband, and I use cast iron or, or stainless steel. Okay. Yeah. So you, it might, you might have to scrub a little bit harder to get the stainless steel clean, but you know, that's what did our parents do? That's what right. they did. That's, I mean, yeah. I don't have to have a perfect pan to cook every <laughs> meal with, and plus they're seasoned. So, you know, uh, so that, and storing your food, you never want to store it in plastic. You only want to store it in glass or stainless steel. So those are, you know, there's, there's room by, I'm coming out with a guide for each room, Okay. but your, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, eventually that'll be up and running too. We're working on that. And this is all on your website. It is. So and do you want to give that out? I'll, I'll sure. post it in the show notes, but if show you want notes. to go ahead and give that out. Yep. It's the green living gurus.com. Just don't forget the, the green living yeah. Everything's on there from all the social media to the podcast links. I have a store on there. Uh, I have an Amazon store on there that I only do. Um, I don't even know if I've ever made a penny off of this store, but <laughs> <laughs> it's I, honestly, it's there. I, people tell me they buy there all the time, but I've never seen anything come over from Amazon. God only knows. But what I did it for is when people people would say, "Well, give me a shampoo." Well, I put everything that we would we would use ourselves on there, whether it's beauty products or cleaning supplies. Unfortunately, my cleaning supplies are not on Amazon. You have to go through my website, but there are other good cleaning supplies out there as well. That's great. Well, I have just absolutely thoroughly enjoyed talking with you and really just getting down deep into the stuff that's going on. And I think, like we said, I think people sort of take it for granted that there aren't these regulations. And we just assume if it's being sold in a store that it's probably safe and we can take it home and it just, it just isn't. So I really yeah. enjoyed going deep with you on that and getting messy. And I just very excited that you came on the show. And is there anything else you'd like to add or ta uh, to let us uh, think about as we close up? No, there's just, you know, I, I like to tell people don't get overwhelmed. Try to do That's it one, one step at a time. Because it can a, be, it can be very it, overwhelming. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we didn't even touch on water. Water is a whole <laughs> other, our water in the United States is is just over, it's just, it's toxic, put it yeah. that way, in my personal opinion. You get your, and you can look at what's in your water on the Environmental Working Group website and just plug in water, but it's overwhelming. And you take it one step at a time. Don't throw everything out, even though I know people that have done that. And that, that's one of my all time favorite things to do with people. Just start over. Start over. But, um, and you don't need as many products as they tell you you need, especially with cleaning supplies. It makes me insane that you, know, you need this for the, you know, everything. You don't need 20 things. Mm -hmm. But slowly, start reading the labels, looking at the ingredients, looking what you're using, eating, putting on your skin and make, make switches, make changes slowly. That's great. Well, I'm so grateful that you came on to our little podcast. Thank you so much for sharing all of your things and you're maybe welcome. we can have you back again and maybe get into water. Yes, I would love to. Okay. Definitely. All right. Absolutely. Thank you Anytime. so much. Anytime. Thanks for what you're doing too, Sarah. Oh, well. I'm... Because the more of us out here, the better. <laughs> We're trying. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Okay.